Welcome guys to, uh, to Meet and Knows. Anahita, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's just such a pleasure. And so I'm just going to lead the conversation with some questions and then we'll open it to, to the audience for questions and super casual. So Okay, sounds good. Um, let's start with your industry experience because um, we're, you know, perfume related here. You started at Chalmanish as a project coordinator. So what, what does that mean? What does a project coordinator do at Chalmanish? Yeah, so it, it was, I guess it was really faith that brought me to perfumery. Um, I, 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 I walked into Firminish not really knowing anything about fragrance houses or really how, how the, the art, uh, all that was involved in creating a scent. It was a very, you know, as an entry job point, as an entry job as a kind of a coordinator on projects. Uh, but my, my luck was that I was working on projects uh, that involved Anne Gottlieb. So from very early on, I really got to, uh, through the meeting, see someone, you know, who was uh, at the, uh, a master in many different categories. And really quickly, I realized, you know, this is so much fun. Um, if I'm going to be in this industry and you know, I want to be part of the, the creation process. And so I was very lucky um, and uh, Firminish uh, offered me to do the, the scent development training. And I, you know, a lot of the people that come from, you know, the Izipka school, and of course there's other schools as well now. Um, so for those who, you know, haven't fallen into perfumery early on, it's really um, the, the houses, I would say, to some great extent that allow you to, uh, to acquire the skills. So I was lucky to do that. And then I uh, became a junior scent de developer. I worked on a variety of products from uh, home care to, you know, perfumery, fine fragrance, as they say. And those were really the, the training years for me um, uh, until I then moved uh, to, to IFF. Yeah, and at IFF, you, you were an evaluator, is that correct? Uh, yeah, so IFF, I was also an evaluator. And, you know, um, I, I have to say, you know, going back a little bit to these beginnings, when I look back now, it, it has a lot to do also with the people who, uh, who support you, uh, people who, you know, show you, show you the oh. way. Um, and, you know, Anne, of course, was, was a first great mentor for me in this industry, um, as was and still is to this day, uh, Veronique Ferval. So Veronique was actually the first person I ever met when I walked into the doors at Firminish. And it's also a little bit because of her, I shouldn't be saying this, but, uh, <laughs> you know, she, she eventually went to IFF and she kept telling me, you know, you would also really like it here. Come, come, come. And I was like, no, I'm perfectly happy at, at Firminish. And then it was really out of curiosity that I started meeting, uh, you know, a few people at IFF. I met Nicolas Mirzaillon, I met Carlos Benaim, I met Jean-Marc Chaillon. Um, and I basically just, you know, fell in love with, uh, you know, a new set of, I would say, perfumers, which allowed me to, um, you know, also have a, a jump, I would say, in my career and start working on different types of products. And my, my first years at Firminish, you know, it's very much at, at Firminish, it was a lot about, you know, working uh, on, on, on a variety of products. And at IFF, it just allowed me to focus more on, you know, on the fine fragrance category. Yeah, and, and I mean, as far as people to meet at IFF, I mean, Carlos Benaim, I can't think of a nicer human being, you know. He's, he's, he's like so cultured and, and kind and gentle. And, he's, yeah. he's truly a gentleman. And, yeah. and, you know, when I have to say, perfumers have always been uh, great mentors, um, just great human beings and great people to, to exchange with. You know, as, as an evaluator, I, I remember in my, in my beginnings, I was like, I am never, I, I just can't see it. Like, I can't visualize the scent. Uh, I don't see the connection. So when I was, you know, uh, uh, connecting with more senior evaluators who would say, well, this product is connected to that and see how they've taken this and that. And I just couldn't see it at first, you know, it was really, really hard. And then, you know, of course, with time and practice and the more, this, the more you smell, the more you see, you know, you, you start, creating your own kind of um, database of, of connections for yourself. And it was always, you, you know, I, I was very always uh, intimidated to some extent and humble when I entered, you know, a perfumer's office, uh, such as Annie Byzantin, Harry Freeman, or Carlos Benaim, uh, a lock, lock dong, because, you know, they know intimately what's inside their formula. And here, you know, you are as an evaluator having to bring something to the table that's going to, you know, be added value to their process and to the overall process. So I, 
I, I, I loved evaluation. I, I, I love the, the intimacy that you get into and, you know, when you're creating a product, the intimacy that you get into with the perfumers and how they're envisioning things. And it was always for me, you know, a quest of, you know, what, how can I, how can I, how can I be of added value um, to these people who I could, you know, cynically say, you know, why do they need me? They know what's in there. <laughs> you know, the, many of them have created masterpieces. What am I bringing to the table to help them, to help this process? So that was always, I think, uh, a little bit the, the, what, what motivated me, what was also the challenge, you know, it was uh, a, a bit of a two-sided coin in regards to the, the role of an evaluator for me. So can you explain to people who may not be too familiar with exactly what an evaluator does? Uh, yeah, so you're, as an evaluator, you're a little bit like, a, I would say, you know, you can equate it to like being a bit of a, a stylist, let's say. So you're, you know, you're a stylist and you have this amazing collection of, of, of perfumes that are provided by all these perfumers that you work with. And then, you know, a client, uh, you know, assigns a brief and they have specific criteria that they're trying to build upon. And it's sort of your job to, to work with what you know exists and curate a selection, let's say, for that first briefing session. Of course, always in collaboration with the perfumers. But you're basically putting in a you know, curation of, of ideas to jumpstart the process. Um, and then if you're lucky, they like one or two, and then it goes on to the next round. And then of course, there's a lot of commentary that comes from, you know, both sides of, sure. of, of the players. <laughs> everybody, everybody has an opinion and, oh, yeah. you know, and every opinion is, I would say, you know, valid. I, uh, I'd be lying to say if all, all opinions are more or less equal, but, you know, everybody <laughs> okay. certainly has an opinion. So, you know, then it becomes very much this uh, quiz of and this puzzling and problem solving of, you know, when, when you say this, what is it that it relates to in the formula? What does it actually mean? And the, the evaluator's role is also to be, you know, some sort of a super, super user, if you will, someone who, who knows the market, um, some, someone who has, uh, I would say, an aesthetic sense and someone who's also going to wear the, what the perfumers have created and to provide an extensive feedback on, okay, you know, how did it perform three hours into it, four hours into it, five hours into it. Mm -hmm. And someone who also has, uh, you know, of course, the, the client's uh, brief in mind and is a bit of a bridge. Of course, the perfumers also connect uh, with a, some clients directly and sometimes not. So, you know, you're a little bit, uh, um, uh, I would say, uh, a gatekeeper for the project to make sure that the best ideas make it to the, to the table. Um, and for those who are selected, that they're developed in the best way possible to answer the, the question that's been asked of you. And it's interesting because you're really but between the, the perfumer and, and the client and meaning that you're sort of interpreting what the, per, you know, the artist yeah. Yeah. wants, yeah. And, but also sort of translating so it's really a, a language job isn't it in a lot it of is and i have yeah. to say you know i i started out thinking i'd become a translator so i i always liked language i always liked the you know the conversation and the um, the opening into other culture that um knowing language allows you to do mm. and it's yeah it is very much a work of interpretation and uh, and translation of a, a vision and words into you know a medium that is uh <laughs> very abstract of course and you know and, and subjective because so much relies of, as everybody here knows and as you know well and through the work you do with the institute uh, you know we all have our own ideas and connections so when I say you know I want sweet or fresh it might not mean the same thing to you totally yeah I, fr fresh is fresh is I think uh, yeah fresh and sweet I that. think being yeah. Yeah, some that are really uh, you know can create yeah. um, problems <laughs> Have there, were there any perfumes that you were working on as an evaluator? I mean, I, I know we had spoken about the, about Euphoria. Yeah, I mean, there's many that I was lucky to work on. So um, I, you know, I, I have to say it was really powerful to be able uh, to be exposed to a variety of brands and the people behind those brands. So that's, you know, a, a richness that I take away. Um, I think one, one perfume that has a special spot in my heart um, is, is probably Euphoria because it was the, one of the first big kind of blog busters that I got to work on. Uh, of course, with many others, uh, three perfumers were involved, Anne Gottlieb was on the project, other evaluators. Um, so it, it really was a great example of how it takes a village to, you know, to bring it to, to the market. Um, and it was fascinating to see also when you get um, 
perfumes where there's a collaboration happening with between perfumers and perfumers from different regions. So in this case, uh, you know, it was the US and there was Paris, you know, how all of this sort of comes together, uh, how the decisive moments in a project where, you know, you think you're almost out of the project and then, you know, the, the right move is made and all of a sudden, you know, all those who weren't on board are, you know, in love again. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's a really exciting and um, fascinating process, uh, especially when it becomes at such a global level because you're taking into account, um, you know, so many different uh, factors. Yeah, and in this one, it was a collaboration. I'm, I looked it up quickly on For Granted. I should have done this before the session, but no, okay. I'm seeing Carlos Benaim, Lockdown, and Jean-Marc Chaillon in exactly, there. So that's yeah. three perfumers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I kind of remember specific parts without getting too much into the sto that story, but you kind of, you know, I think the beauty of being an evaluator and kind of in this business working in a on the creative side really close to the source is that you really get to see these you know magical moments and all these ideas coming together and and the different articulations and all the different paths taken that led to you know one possibility which was super interesting but which was not on profile for this like, you know you really you know that exercise is you know is truly what excited me in that job and what I, you know, learned the most from in terms of my interactions with perfumers and also clients, of course, um, who are developing. So interesting. Okay. So, okay. So, you, cause I want to get us to, to algorithm perfumery. So we're going to march along through your bio. Yeah. So, so you were an evaluator for five years and then you went into sales and marketing and you did a master's program in that time at FIT in fragrance, cosmetics, and marketing yeah. and management. So yeah. what, what triggered that desire to get further education in marketing and management? So I kind of went into sales despite of me. Like I did not want to go into sales. I know, I know you and you're not like a sales person. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go into sales. But it kept being offered to me. And at some point, you know, when you've said no two or three times, you're like, okay, I think I need to say yes. And, <laughs> and, and maybe the, there's a reason why I'm resisting so much. Maybe there's actually something for me to learn. Yeah. Um, and actually it ended up being kind of probably the toughest years in sales. Um, and, a, a, and a bit of a contrast to my more uh, honeymoon, you know, creation years uh, in, in development. Um, what I learned, though, was I think, and that's probably why I also decided, again, and, and IFF was incredible in sponsoring me for that program. It, it, it was good for me because it allowed me to um, get a little bit out of the, you know, the, the very close, intimate bubble of sense creation with the perfumers and to get a bit of a more expanded vision of the, you know, of the industry and, and of the process. And yeah, that's, and, that's, and the public, yeah. I imagine, too. And I mean, the public, exactly. This I mean, is a the, public medium. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and, and thanks for bringing that up, because I think that's actually a, a bigger trigger in, in, in the step that I'm taking now. Um, so, so the program was great, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a micro program, um, Stephen Camion runs it and, you know, there's great contributors to it. And it just allowed me to get a little bit closer to the brand mindset hmm. because a lot of my, uh, classmates actually were brand, brand managers. Hmm. Um, so that was also interesting, you know, um, when you're working in a house, of course you're working with the brands, but you know, there's still that separation of you as a partner sometimes seen as a supplier um, and you know that the brand is really the owner of of what happens to the scent um, I, I i often said you know creating working on a project like of, of creating a scent it's a, a little bit like having a baby with i would imagine with someone and then putting it up for adoption i've, I've never done that mm. um, but you know you you're you're fully engaged in the you know the development and then there comes a time where you know nothing is really in your hands anymore um you know the name how the kid is going to be dressed you know what schools it will be sent to how it'll be totally. distributed you know all of that is out of your hands um so the, 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 the program was really good in also seeing all those other components of, you know, the, the marketing of it, you know, the distribution and also just other products, uh, you know, um, skincare, cosmetics, things like that. Yeah. So, okay. So then you took that and, and you, and you were still at IFF and, and at some stage uh, in, in all this, you started a project uh, called, called Avant Garden, uh, yes. which is 
I'd love to talk about that because it's such a beautiful project, you know? Sure, yeah, and it was a very transformative one for it me, was, for sure. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, after doing a development and sales, I, I moved into a, a marketing role, so marketing uh, for North America. Um, and as part of uh, my role there, you know, IFF was always very good at creating um, these, you know, inno innova olfactory innovation platforms. And so I had the opportunity to work on the next chapter, which ended up being called Avant Garden. And, and, and the premise of it was um, partnerships between uh, a perfumer, an external scientist, and uh, artists slash technologies designers who, uh, who we worked with. Um, it, you know, you, you, you got to see it. So it, it's, I, I feel like it was, a great, you know, multi-sensory exhibit that very few people in the end got to see because it was not open to the public. Um, a lot of the people from the industry, of course, came and visited it. And, uh, you know, it, it was really, I would say, a more expansive look at scent and, and I would say the role of scent in general. So it was quite futuristic um, and scientists that we worked with range anywhere from a linguist to a to a to a psychologist to an anthropologist so it was really exciting to have these conversations and that's where uh frederick frederick dwaring and, and i met uh frederick was the 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 lead you know design and uh, i would say technology developer at the time um polymorph who was invited into the collaboration and you know uh, with him and those guys really took the, uh, these conversations to the level of materializing them in concepts that then became uh, interactive experiences that visitors could go through. Algorithmic perfumery, uh, one of the experiences ended up being the first uh, you know, expression of this idea of algorithmic perfumery and the first prototype, which then um, Frederick kind of took to the next level and the, you know, the turning point for me was, you know, I, I was so uh, transformed by that whole project and also that concept in particular that really spoke to me as well that I basically, uh, you know, le left IFF um, and um, dedicating, you know, I'm dedicating my time with him to really taking this, you know, to the next level. And, and, and going back to something you said earlier which i you know the the the, the consumer the 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 the, you know, the the person the end user i think what i had been sensing in 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 how i was working in a, in a perfume house at one point was i really kind of missed that intimate and direct connection to the end user um, because of course you know we were creating for for large numbers of people of course there's a lot of uh, consumer know-how, knowledge, you know, all of that is available. But if I'm honest with myself, you know, there's very little instances where you're really in touch with that end user, other than, you know, you're walking on the street and you recognize that someone smell, is wearing, yeah. you know, something and you're like, oh my God, they're wearing this or that. How exciting. You know, you really don't get into a conversation with them. And I think also as an artist, for me, you know, the, the magic of any uh, ritual of creation or any ritual of transformation is that final moment of sharing what has been done, right? And, and seeing the reaction uh, the, of, of people and how they receive it and how they react to it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I sort of, um, on an intuitive level, uh, wished more of. <laughs> Uh, having done, you know, having spent some time in the industry and having worked on a number of projects. And I think that's really the, the, the exciting premise in algorithmic perfumery for me right now, especially also at this stage where we're, you know, very close to every element of it to really see how people react and to really see people taking part in the creation process. Um, and so for those of you who are, who are maybe not, you know, familiar with what we do, it, it, you know, it's basically a hardware software system um, that integrates the, you know, the entire process of scent creation from the moment of inspiration, I would say, or creation all the way down to um, the production. And all of this is happening uh, via uh, an app, which allows you to connect to a sensory machine where the ingredients are and um, through a, a dialogue of, 
we, we, we ask you a number of questions uh, and then the AI, because all of this is also based on machine learning, is going to give you three suggestions. And once you get your three suggestions, you can actually also take control of, of that formula and further decide for yourself how, how, you, how you like it or don't or what you're interested in exploring. So in some ways, uh, every, every user is you know, their own evaluator. And I think that's the part that really um, you know, excites me uh, because of the, I think that the fun that I had as an evaluator, which the, you know, the biggest fun was of course, seeing a product come to life but the even bigger fun was seeing all the steps in between or all the things that sometimes didn't come to life. Right, and the, the lost the lost Exactly, threads, kind yeah. of the lost threads. And also the, oh my God, when you do this, this is what happens. Well, that's not what we wanted, but that's really actually super interesting. And maybe this is something I would, you know, keep for another time. So, you know, the, I, I have a lot of love and respect for, for this industry and for, for many brands that I'm a big fan of. And I think what we're offering is just, a, you know, a, a, different, a different interaction through Scent. And, yeah. uh, and, and it's, you know, not just the end product. It's really an experience that, that engages you in a process in, in, in ways that I, I believe are not uh, offered yet. Um, and that's the excitement that every person, of course, knows best for themselves what they like or what they don't. And they actually get to exercise uh, that for themselves and, you know, in the process, learn maybe uh, about things that they thought they didn't like, but they actually do and et cetera. So, you know, that, that's, that's the fun part. That's the part that excites me. That's the, the part that's, you know, difficult. <laughs> that mm -hmm. is the, you know, the challenge that kind of pushes us forward. But um, and I think that's how also I make sense of it in terms of, you know, what I've done in this industry and where I'm ending up is really actually very much super close to, to people again. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I've super, seen, I've seen yeah. That. You've, I've seen you, know, you. Yeah, yeah, you I've know. seen you like out <laughs> there in Brita, like on the floor talking to people and, and directing. Yeah, so, you know, Brita where we have our living lab. So that's kind of our, you know, our permanent testing environment, which is a bit of a, a, a location connected to, to the rest of where the team is is housed where we we get to try all the different variations of whatever we're doing you know we're, we're, we're a lot about prototyping and testing <laughs> trying and then testing it and then trying mm -hmm. again so all of those iterations happen there um and then also of course you know it was also really fun uh in february of this year it seemed so far away when we were at you know the ace hotel in new york um which was a read and i see some people actually um connected today that were, that were there. Um, you know, every, every, every experience ends up being a really interesting conversation with a, with a human being. And I think that's the beauty and the, and the power of sense is that we can engage in, in ways that we otherwise might not, because it takes you so quickly to the, to the heart of the matter and to the heart of what that person what likes that or they don't like. Um, so you just can have a really fascinating conversation and I think at a deeper level right away versus opening up on, you know, with some other medium. Um, and I think that's what I, I personally get away, get a, get a lot from, you know, in, in my interactions um, so far. I was watching you and Breda talking to people coming in the street and, and you started to see these sort of transformations of discovery and it's, it is really powerful you know it really it is real for people you know yeah I think you touch on something else and you put it elegantly I so let's address the elephant in the room I mean after a while I think maybe it's a human thing when you do something for a long time you know uh, and especially when you start seeing patterns of how to do it you can get you know a little complacent and you know, I always tried not to but I'd be lying if I said that there weren't moments in my career that you know you know it's not always an upline right you have moments where you're learning you you're, you're excited. There's moments where, you know, it gets difficult and you have to try to find, you know, ways to stay engaged. So, you know, I certainly had that, those up and downs. And I think the moments where I was more down were moments where, yeah, I felt a little bit disconnected from that magic, you know, and I felt a little bit, like I was saying, disconnected from really knowing how, what we were doing. I knew it intellectually was impacting the well-being of someone who actually loves that scent, you know, and 
every time they put it on, you know, it just takes them to a, a really good place. Losing a little bit touch with that. And I, I think like anything, yeah. when we start becoming a little too um, mental about topics, um, well, yeah, we, we lose that, uh, you know, that magic. So yeah. what I also like about what we're doing is that it's very embodied, you know, it's, 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 it's actually physical too. You know, you're, 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 you're taking stuff, you're touching stuff. Um, that wasn't available. So people haven't really seen it uh, for the New Yorkers who were at ACE, but we also have, you know, these scent mixing tables when you can smell the accords that are in your formula and they're interactive, you know, they, the, the, the table tells you what's in your formula with lights. So, you know, you're also being stimulated by other things. So I think when you really get into it, not just with your imagination, but also with your body, then you really have, you know, you're fully in it. And I think it just ends up being a more exciting uh, offering for people. And I think yeah. they also learn, you know, I think you also learn more through that kind of stimulation than just reading descriptions and uh yeah yeah i mean the, the other thing i think that's interesting about about uh this this project algorithm and perfumery is that so you're you're an artist and, and fred is frederick is a is a filmmaker so we have someone with a visual sense and someone who, who has a story sense and then frederick also has his visual and he's very much as well. a, a yeah. maker also i would say exactly so but, but what's cool about that is that you know the the experience of the thing actually like you touched on it quickly, there are these lights at the table and they light up and there's this sort of sense of magic that technology can bring when it's working well, you know? Yeah. That I feel like um, is central to sort of the experience of algorithm. Yeah, programming. yeah. Magic is a good word. And, you know, going back a little bit to avant-garde and, and kind of, which ended up being like a, a mega focus group for seeing, uh, you know, some very knowledgeable people in the industry react to this idea of a, of a machine interacting with you and creating something on the spot, right? So that was the primary idea. Uh, at the time, there, there wasn't a, a close connection to you. Um, what I experienced, and I, what I experienced now, of course, with the later iterations of the machine, is, is really that, that magic, you know, that almost that childlike wonder of like, well, you know, how does it work? What's mm -hmm. happening? Totally. And, you know, Willy Wonka was something that people would often say, like, oh, it's so Willy Wonka, you know, uh, and it would totally then shift their whole, you know, mindset and approach to the medium, because it's coming from that place of enchantment mm -hmm. uh, and that place of kind of curiosity and, and putting you then, you know, what I, I, this is uh, our constant, um, I would say, you know, uh, goal. Uh, of putting you in that sort of explorer mindset yeah. um, you know let me let me see what I like let, oh, I got this well I, I don't I like it or I don't but what can I do to it um, and, and the other part for me also is I've I've experienced that people who might not typically be drawn to perfumery you know or perfumes it also gives them a, a different, you know, entry point or gateway into the sort of sensory exploration um, because just the, you know, the machine kind of intrigues them. Yeah. And, I mean, there's something it, magic. It, like, yeah. Comes down and, and, and then, it, right. And, and then it, it, it's not about, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm here to buy a perfume, you know, of, it ends up also being, that's also byproducts of it, but it's not about, you know, it's not the main thing. Uh, so any, anyone, I think, can find a, a component in that experience that speaks to them, therefore makes it a, a broader offering, therefore, I think, also makes it more inclusive. Um, you know, people who might not typically think that perfume is a thing for them then realize mm, it's actually just about, you know, creation um, yeah. and, and puzzling. So, yeah, that can apply to a lot of people. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, and that is the okay. So that's that's that is something that I think is is cool about this project as well. Um, is is that sort of connecting it to the larger creative process? And of course, there's the question of empowerment. You know, which yeah. obviously I'm interested in with the institute. Yeah. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about that that sort of access thing, um, that access point that the that this project is is touching on. You know. So acts, yeah. So you know the the a you know agency, agency, that's agency. That's our, our word. It's a good word. <laughs> not not the ad agency, but no, you know no. agency, human agency. The human agency <laughs> is you know as as a core a value of ours, um, um, and it's something that 
basically drives us, you know, making people into, uh, not making them, I'm sorry, let me reformulate that, allowing them, because I think it's in all of us, but we kind of get into these uh, maybe relationships with products that don't allow us to exercise it, right? Mm -hmm. um, because we're just, you know, we choose. And, and there's beauty in that as well. I, there's a lot of products that are beautiful and we just want to buy them and go. But, you know, we, we're kind of nudging you to enter a different kind of relationship, you know, with us and, the, and, the, and what we're offering. And that relationship is to kind of stimulate the, you know, the, the agency that you have in deciding I like this, I don't like that. Um, the, the, the agency through learning, uh, you know, what goes inside. Um, so that's, you know, a, a core idea of making decisions for yourself and then through the, the, the technology of the overall platform, giving you the tools then to, pra you know, practice what it is that you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really having the full scope of, uh, you know, possibilities there. And then, you know, bringing in the playfulness that, you know, I touched on with, you know, things like the, 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 the scent mixing table, uh, ways to, to show you what goes inside that, that engage you. Um, and, you know, it's, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm always amazed because I think um, sometimes we tend to underestimate, or I should maybe speak for myself, underestimate how much people know about things they don't know about <laughs> because it's just such a primal sense that of course they, they have very definitive ideas about what they like and what they don't. And then there's this whole area in between that they just haven't explored yet. Mm. Um, so, you know, what you really aim to do is just open up that gap and not make it so binary. Like I like, I don't, but make it hopefully a little bit more interesting and rich and diverse and say, okay, you know, in, in that zone, there's so much to be discovered. Um, and unless you buy a lot of products, you know, and then kind of take on that adventure for yourself, I, I think what we're doing just allows you to do it, you know, more simply uh, or faster uh, or in ways that, uh, you know, appeal to you. And, and within all that, you know, um, you are creating a system that sort of, in a lot of ways, bypasses brands you know what i mean um Aha, here it comes <laughs> i know well so i'm curious about how how the industry yeah. has reacted so far how you feel about that because i know you have a lot of respect for the industry and yeah i mean my thoughts on that are we're not here to replace brands like that's not what our mission is that's not what we're we're driving to do we're here to you know kind of open up and widen a, a path that I think is not being fully offered yet today and that our technology makes actually, you know, more, more possible. Um, so I think there's always going to be room for products that are made by brands that people love. I'm one of those people, you know, there's as much as I've made things with our system that I love, I still go back to my, I'm going to do a Au Monumental third man, which is, I adore. <laughs> Sorry, I did a bit of a product placement there. It's okay. <laughs> but it's just to say, you know, there are these products that we intimately love and they're, they're not going to be replaced. Um, but yes, of course, we're, we're, we have a totally different approach. We're, we're not giving our perfume names. We're not, we're not giving them um, you know, imagery or personalities to promote them. Uh, we're saying, you know, it's, it's you, it's what you like, it's your story. Um, let's bring out that story. And um, there's, I think, a lot of beauty in every, you know, our, our, our brand is, our brand still is, 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 is called uh, Every Human. And the you know, the philosophy behind that is really that, that every, every person is, is unique. Every person is uh, distinctly different from the next one. And we want to be, I guess, the brand that's really close to that, you know, and close to that relationship <laughs> that you enter with yourself when you get into a mode of like, hmm, you know, how do, how do I feel about this? Where would I want to take this? Um, so that's, I think, you know, if I had to describe the kind of brand that we are, and I'm not saying other brands don't have that kind of relationship, but it's that 
that kind of, I think, quality of uh, proximity that we're after. And that proximity can only come, I believe, if it's about you. I'm, I'm curious a little bit, because I know you've worked a lot uh, with, with um, well, with the actual descent development for the system, you know, um, the yep. components that create the perfume. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about that process? I mean, was it challenging? Was it Sure, sure. So um, we, you know, we, uh, our current, so I would say like mid-size machine has uh, 38 dispensers and each of those dispensers has, uh, has an accord in it. So in other words, a, a mini composition of uh, ingredients um, and they range anywhere from five ingredients to sometimes 30. Uh, so what we've done is we've, you know, tried to uh, emulate the main building blocks of perfumery that allow users to go to a lot of different places and territories and to, to, um, to experience. So there's, you know, there, there was the, the whole the curation of the palette um, that we worked on very closely with our, with our perfumers. And I'm going to do a little shout out to, to Spiros and uh, Andreas as well. Um, and you know our vocation is also to to enlarge our, our, our collective of perfumers that we work with um, because I think part of the importance of this uh, system is that it's it's not connected to the to the style or the the thinking process of one person but it almost becomes this universal <laughs> depository of, of, of possibilities uh, fueled by different different perspectives um, what is, I think, also, um, you know, maybe important for people to know is, uh, you know, we really have created everything from the ground up. So we create our own accords. Uh, you know, we've built the machine in-house. We have our own team of um, software, AI, mechanical engineers. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're really, uh, you know, in some ways, you know, uh, May probably made things more complicated than need be, but what it does is that it allows us to really uh, control the entire process and, and build it as we as it needs to be done for this to work. So we've also um, integrated, uh, you know, toxicology features. Um, you know, the, the system is also going to systematically uh, review anything that a user wants to produce before it's produced to make sure that ingredients are within the safety guidelines uh, of all the regulators. Of the, yeah. yeah, so you know, you know, it's really, a, 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 it's really a, a, an exciting uh, professional tool um, that people, uh, that people have access uh, and can play with. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that was also, you know, so you can imagine all the, the layers of complications that, you know, we're constantly dealing with. Um, and part of the, the, the learning is, of course, the machine has to start from somewhere. So, you know, teaching it at first, what is, what, what is uh, something that smells good or not. Uh, a lot of a backstage evaluation going on um, to, to, to teach it some, some sense of perception. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have a, a, a large user feedback loop. Uh, everything that is ever handed out to a user, they get to you know, respond to us and tell us what they thought about it. And of course, then that in itself feeds the machine. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, and I, I know Frederick talked a little bit about it when, um, during the experimental scent summit, but you know, we take a lot of different approaches and we're constantly basically, you know, basically trying to see which approach is the more promising one. Uh, and, you know, in this end goal of, getting as close as possible to predicting something that, you know, they're actually are going to, to love, which yeah. is, you know, which is a very hard, I don't know, for anyone who says in this industry, you know, we know that to predict what someone is going to like. Yeah. And so um, you chose yeah. to work with accords versus raw materials because there's only so much space. Uh, in this version. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we have, we have our, our, our larger version where then also we have single, single ingredients. So yes, um, in this version, which is, you know, more compact, you know, if you start only putting single materials, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're more limited in, you know, in the, in the spectrum of possibilities. So already with something which is only 38 accords, I mean, you can you can do all the families you can get into interesting nuances uh you know there's i i don't know exactly the number of possibilities but there's enough to keep you busy 
um, <laughs> but that's basically yeah why for this 38 machine it's a cords and not um, raw materials raw yeah. materials and you know of course we try to keep the accords um, as pure I don't know if I, you know if can relate to the word pure or as streamlined as possible Mm -hmm. um so that once you also start you know mixing them together it, you know the formula doesn't get uh unnecessarily uh you know heavy or loaded um so yeah there was you know a lot of i, I would say effort that went into that that first uh, first iterations for the 38 machine and then we have an expanded palette which also includes uh single ingredients with the the larger machine which hasn't been shared yet yeah of course. yeah and so so a question from from ariana she's wondering about transparency um and 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 your system so uh there's quite a few little questions here but so are you uh, uh she, i guess she's asking why you aren't um publishing the formulas of the accords maybe or being transparent about what's in the accords at that level that's a good question um i think I think the publishing of the formula of the accords, I'm not sure it would necessarily serve the, the end user. Uh, and I'm saying this, uh, you know, I'm thinking this out loud because we also, you know, uh, provide all the allergy illness things. So all of that is also listed. I'm, I'm sure that would be more interesting to, you know, um, practitioners who are even more curious about what goes in there. I don't think we'd be against doing that at, at some point. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty complex uh, experience already. So, you know, there, we've put a lot of effort in trying to make it accessible without dumbing it down. Um, and I, I'm not sure if people walk away right now with a long list of ingredients, if it will help them understand better what they've done versus the, the effort that we've put into breaking down building blocks so that they can get a bit of a easier accessible way of knowing, okay, this is what the jasmine in my formula smells like versus I'm going to give you the ingredients that go into a jasmine. You know, that's, that's not going to, I don't think help them. I mean, because you're not, you're not doing this. I mean, uh, the, at least the initial, I mean, I know Frederick has spoken about uh, the, down the line stages, but the initial stages, you're not, this isn't a, this is for, oops my mother this is for consumers right i mean for yes the, yeah. but the, the, i mean in this in this um i would say in in this experience that we're talking about right now it's for consumers so yes I, and i think that that probably you know explains why we wouldn't just give hand them over uh, the long list of ingredients in their formula of course this system has also applications that could be for non non-consumers and in that case, um, of course, you know, someone uses the system to create something. And let's say, for example, they're a small brand and they, they want to try something out. Of course, they're, they're, you know, they'll have access to what's inside the formula. Otherwise, you know, they, they can't. Uh, but that's not, I would say, um, that's in the realm of things that we can do and we will be doing. But that's not the experience that, um, that, has been, yeah, that, that we've started with. Exactly. Cool. And this is, you know, our, our, our learning has also been primarily through art and design festivals. Right. So for the past two years, you know, we've been on different uh, exhibitions uh, and that's how we do a lot of our collection of, uh, you know, feedback and test out different versions of uh, even the algorithm, you know, have different algorithms compete against each other from one festival to the next and then to kind of see, you know, how we're learning and how we're doing. Mm. Yeah, understood. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a bigger question, transparency and perfumery. And Ariana, I, I see your comments. I, I, I hear you. Um, I think that um, this is a bigger conversation about yeah. open sourcing and the perfume industry. And and I think- And I think we would definitely, you know, be excited to to take part in such conversations and-, um, and, and As you and, have. And, and contribute. Mean, but I think, yeah, yeah the experience as, as, as it lives today in the festivals is, is you know, that was not the, the purpose or the intent of it. And also, just just to let everybody know that that uh, just for full disclosure, also like the Institute for Art and Olfaction and Algorithmic Perfumery are working on an open source database, and we can't talk about that further. But it is it is coming down the line. Um, so okay, so moving on from the open source transparency questions, let's talk about. And Annabella asks if you think that that magic uh, that we spoke about is only possible on the spot. Uh, 
Mm. If it's only possible on the spot, so in the moment that you're actually yeah, doing like it, uh, yeah. is there feedback from your first users? Like they, they have the magic on the spot and they go home and they're like, oh, I don't like it as much, kind of thing. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, so I see. I see the question. Um, well, I, I think there's an undeniable magic on the spot just because of everything we explained. You know, the machine is intriguing and eyesore. They're participating, so that's the first moment of you know, aha! I I, I really dig this. Um, we we we've. So we have quite a few people uh, who've gone to the festivals that have reached out to us and said, you know, I love what I created. How can I get more? Which wasn't something that we were offering. So we, we do have this sort of uh, under the radar beta store <laughs> for festival goers or for people who experienced it, uh, mm -hmm. where we've been honoring people who wanted to get more and then kind of um, they could order it in that manner. We're working towards really making the experience um, available from from home mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to go live uh, uh, later part of the year and absolutely the, the the moment of discovery is just one moment right the first moment and we know all too well that you know you bought products so you thought you like something and then once you wear it um, you know it's not really what you had thought and that's a little bit also why for now the way we we sort of have framed the experience is you 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 get you know very small samples you get you know kind of a 3ml sample uh, of, of the suggestions and also what you tweak because the, the the philosophy is you know take it home wear them by themselves see how you really feel about it see if it's really as you thought it was um, and then, by the way, if you feel like you want to change some things after that moment of further, you know, exploration, you can start doing new drafts of formula, you know, from your phone from home. Um, I wonder if I did this or that and then come back and produce other versions or come back and we, we, we adjust it. So, you know, we, we certainly hope it's not going to be a one time thing and that, you know, it becomes a little bit if I had to, um, uh, make an analogy to, you know, being after the, that perfect recipe for of some dish for yourself that you just keep kind of perfecting and then, you know, you make it again. And then the next time I'm going to try a little bit this or more that. Um, so we are also thinking of ways to really make this a bit of a more ongoing, engaged um, experience with, you know, the people who, who come to us um, so that it doesn't become just a one-time thing. So, so um, Heather's asking, um, can you tell us a bit more about the AI? What data does it use to learn? Is it from previous users, from a correlation of certain sense to concepts, uh, repeated formulations, et cetera? I yeah, so the AI, you know, looks at a number of things. Um, and um, let's, let me see, let me break it down for you a little bit. So there's, of course, uh, the feedback of previous users that's going to indicate, oh, well, you know, the, this, this profile was liked. And then if, if there's some similarities in terms uh, between this user and another, it might start seeing, you know, clusters of people who, who tend to like certain things. Um, we, we, you know, we get excited when we start seeing some patterns and then, you know, one week later we start seeing that it's not necessarily consistent. So that's a bit of an ongoing process for us as well. Um, so yeah, the feedback loop is, is super important um, and different parts, different algorithms might look at, you know, different parts of the, the questionnaire as well. Um, because right now the reason why we also give out three suggestions is because we're still testing out different, different approaches. And so that allows us to see um, that allows us to see basically which one is doing better. Um, in terms of how the AI learns, you know that there's also the 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 more preliminary kind of backstage work that I explained to you is we also create you know we're a lot of formulas uh, and then we we basically get into an evaluation mode um, so that it can understand how you know, someone who's, let's say, an expert at least as a baseline would perceive this. Um, so, you know, there's, it's kind of multiple sources of input from the user, from also, you know, backstage, um, you know, expert reviews uh, that allows it to start seeing however it sees, because I could not tell you more than that. You know, it, it's, it's a bit of a, a black box until it starts really kind of spitting back, you know, patterns that, that you can really uh, 
make statements like, yeah, this is a truth and, you know, this is the way to go. Chach, I, Chach just to, to share a little bit more on the transparency conversation, Chach shares that the agency part and being a consumer versus someone totally fresh and new to this mm -hmm. and not overwhelming them. Uh, Chach agrees, um, knowing that, uh, I, I guess Chach, Chach, do you want to share your feedback verbally? I'm not quite oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just sort of, hi, good morning. Hi, hi, hi. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's such an interesting question, just sort of thinking about how, you know, like, like I, I would, as someone who is sort of, you know, like more new to perfumery, mm -hmm. you know, I can understand kind of not wanting to get overly overwhelming yeah yeah but then but then there's this big question you know that we kind of have all of our lives you know just some confronting you know like a shampoo bottle that just says parfum yeah, yeah 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 you know and then it's like what is that yeah and so it's it's sort of like answering that question of like what is that and then how does that get into you know transparency but then I, even thinking about it I'm like you know like on some level like if you if you share all of that then you're also encouraging people like me too to just like go and like purchase those ingredients and make really like dangerous messes at home for well, sure. But Andreas, <laughs> but Andreas, I mean, but Andreas like uh, Wilhelm puts his entire formula on his bottle, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean. Uh, I, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think I'd be too concerned. I mean, at least I, I'm not, and I don't think Frederick would be concerned of anybody going and buying ingredients and then making it for themselves. And you kind of offered an answer right there and there because, you know, I mentioned to you how we've taken the, the care and the time to also integrate the toxicology review mechanisms in what we're doing because, um, you know, there, there's a lot of, um, you know, mis, miseducation, I think, and miscommunication around what is safe, what's not safe, you know naturals are incredible they're beautiful but you certainly don't want to put certain naturals in large quantities on your skin because they're filled with allergens and you know that's not going to take you to a good place so I, I think you know when we talk about transparency people and rightfully so want to know that you know you are a serious brand that you are following guidelines that you're not just you know making concoctions and I, you know, in your, in your basement and then handing them out. So, you know, we take a very conservative approach to our palate ingredients. You know, we follow IFRA, of course, we, you know, Canada, all of it. And we take the, you know, the more severe also guidelines in the way that we've set up our, our reviews. Um, and I think there's certainly room to give more information for people who are really into it. And I have a lot of friends who really are so that they can, you know, decide and go to all the different sources to make sure that it's safe for them. Um, so, but I think it's a, you know, a right balance to find, to be able to answer those people without necessarily overwhelming those who are going to be a little bit lost with, you know, the, the outpour of information onto them. I, I did, but I'm so sorry if you have No, go, already. go. We can ask for you after. It's okay. Okay. Um, hi, Anaita. My name is Refugio. I, I, my hi, question hi. was, um, if so far, if you guys have been able to see that certain ingredients are creating a um, evident um, uh, not, like not, or like addiction or like or yeah yeah like mm -hmm. an evident like this is what people are, are are wanting more of and have you made any adjustments to the initial accords that you started yeah. off with yeah so the first uh, the the first palette that we had at uh, at idfa actually was also a much limited palette we definitely i don't think we've kept anything from that palette <laughs> Uh, then we went to FOSS and FOSS was already the 38 machine and we ended up, uh, I think, uh, readjusting kind of half of that palette um, to arrive, you know, to where we are and we've had, you know, in between rounds. Um, you, you know, it's interesting because, you know, the question of bias always comes up in, I guess, in any system and you realize that uh, yes, there are certain notes, I would say, in our palette that I've noticed are that people tend to like. Um, like, for example, our sandalwood accord uh, seems to be a, like a really, uh, a, a one that's really liked. Um, but I, I, I can't say that it's just a question of one accord is, you know, is always the, the winner. Um, you know, it, it's, it's such a complex uh, craft, uh, you know, so, so, so the structure. So, uh, you know, is it things that are a little bit more singular versus things that are a little bit more complex? 
you know, we're constantly looking at that level to see, you know, what, what type of structures might also appeal um, to more or less people. But yeah, a few, a few of the accords, if I kind of had to give you an answer, I would say I noticed that our, our sandalwood is, you know, is a bit of a crowd pleaser. Um, and some of the floral notes as well. Who doesn't love sandalwood and flowers? <laughs> <laughs> There's other things for you. <laughs> um, this actually ties a little bit into Vera's question. Uh, Rufuhi, are you good with that? Are you answered? Yeah, that answered my question. Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. So Vera asks sort of on the same, in the same line, what is the most powerful or outstanding predictor with respect to preferences that you've noticed? Are, are there, have you been? So surprised? yeah, so there's one that actually surprised me and uh, we had it in a questionnaire because we also work, uh, you know, we have a psychologist also um, who, who works with us and it's the question of uh, Kiki Buba. <laughs> Andreas is in the house, he can talk about it. Um, so Kiki Buba, there you are, I see him laughing. I'm not going to go too in depth into Kiki Buba, but you can, you can talk about it if you want. So Kiki Buba, you know, and of course, every time someone gets to that question, they're like, what does it mean? What am I supposed to do? And like, we're like, you do exactly, you're doing what you need to be doing, which is you react to the sound, you react to the shape, because it also comes with a shape. Um, and that actually tends to be one of the, the most uh, apparently reliable predictors uh, or that helps us. Um, so Kiki Buba. Are you a Kiki or a Buba, Anahita? So I think in my, in my natural state, I'm more of a, a, a Buba, but I certainly have some Kiki, Kiki energy if, you know, push come to shove. I, I, I'm, I, totally, I, I, I'm totally <laughs> kiki. I'm entirely kiki. Yeah. So I, I, I think I'm a little bit more booba than kiki. I, don't I know. think you're a little booba. I agree. You yeah. got kiki. Um, so Anna, Annabella is asking, do people prefer to recreate certain memories or do, do most people have a more abstract approach in your experience? So um, it's interesting because, you know, the first that about at least for the, the, this version that's been mostly, uh, you know, offered right now, people are basically answering the questionnaire and, and you know, we're giving them the three suggestions. Um, then when the next part of the experience is basically they, they see if there is one that they want to tweak or two or actually none and they just want to create from scratch, which they can do. Um, I, I have to be honest, I haven't really, at least in my exchanges, had so many people that talk to me about experiences or memories. Um, often it's, uh, if it's something that they think they like from you know, a, a, another product and it's not necessarily another perfume. They might you know, refer to something in you know, a food, an ingredient food or an, an ingredient and in you know, even a, not a household product, but a shampoo that they like or something like that. So they, they tend to still, I find, uh, not make it so abstract. I, they, they try to offer some sort of a starting point that is anchored in something that's recognizable. Uh, we will, however, you know, there's many versions and possibilities of, of engaging with the system that we're, we'd love to offer. So also giving that possibility is, you know, is on the list. Um, to make, tie it a little bit more to specific uh, memories or, or even imagery. Which it, it sounds like an impossible task, but actually in my experience, a lot of people come with the same memories. Yeah. Which is actually, yeah, it's sort of weirdly depressing that we're so similar or, or actually maybe comforting, but yeah, there's green well, grass. You know, you know. In, in that uniqueness that we have, right? There's also the universal, you know. We're human. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we're unique and we're, there's just so much that's also universal and, and, and connects us, you know, and, and, and a shared, I would say, experience that we have of the world and how it impacts us. Yeah, I agree. Well, so guys, we're, we're kind of at time. Is there maybe a last question before we let Anahita get back to her busy, busy day? Before? Hmm? Hmm? Like oh, thanks for the link to Kiki Buba. Yeah. No <laughs> uh, Rachel says, I'm so grateful I got to experience algorithmic perfumery at the Ace Hotel in February. As someone who visited four to five times over the course of a week, I can vouch for becoming more fascinated by the process. There we go. <laughs> That's Rachel. <laughs> yes, she was, she was, uh, she was the in-house resident. Uh, uh, um, nice to have you here, Rachel. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's the hope, you know, that people, uh, regardless of it being perfumed, just kind of get into it, want to try it out, get fascinated, learn more, 
And I think that can have a positive effect on just, you know, the, the industry and the category in general. So, so I mean, what are you guys um, looking up toward? What are you guys looking forward to? Anahita, what are the... Sorry, I see someone saying as soon as there's a vaccine, I will be in first line. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> okay. Um, um, <laughs> We are looking forward to that, you know, definitely being able to kind of get back on track with our uh, appearances here and there. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like, you know, Europe is, uh, is a little bit ahead of the trend there. So we are going to be at the Ars Electronica Festival in September in, uh, in Austria, in Vienna. So we're honored to be part of that. Uh, there are a number of other festivals. And if you go to our website, we'll be posting that information that we'll be at. I would say in the very kind of more near future, given the, the current uh, situation of, you know, still not being able to circulate as we all would like to, um, the focus for us is going to be the online, uh, the online expression and making the experience available online. Um, so, so that you can try from home and we're thinking about a number of ways to still, you know, allow you to get our guidance from home and some coaching while you're at home. So I think that's, that'll be super exciting. And we're we're working uh, at the institute. We've been working on trying to help with 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 Anahita and Frederick try to get it in LA, and that was going to happen in yeah, March. Yeah, that's true. I know. I didn't May, know if I could but... talk about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Yeah. But anyway, at some point we'll hopefully get it. But to, you know, to we're Washington. you know we're a small entity, but uh, we're we're doing all that we can, and we plan to to stick around and then uh, see this uh, to its fullest expression. So mm -hmm. we are committed. All right, guys. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for joining us, Anahita. It's always thank a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, and, thank you, thank you, everyone. Um, and we will. And, yeah. If any questions or any thoughts come up, you know, feel free to share my email uh, or, or reach out to us at info at algorithmperfumery.com and happy to get back to anything that I might not have covered, which is of interest to you. And I will put that in the chat if I can write perfumery. I don't know how to spell perfumery today. Um, Oh my gosh. Okay, cool. So yeah, and we will post this talk online uh, with Anahita's permission in the coming uh, days. And um, yeah, thanks, Anahita. Super, thank you. Enjoy your afternoon. Bye-bye. Ciao, everyone. <laughs> Bye, thank everybody. You. Thanks, everybody, for joining.